Thank you very much for the invitation. It's a great honor to be here to talk about this difficult um, subject because my disclosure is is that I do believe in, uh, in watchful waiting after complete response has, uh, has been achieved. Uh, but I, I, will tell you, I will give you some, some fruit for thought uh, on uh, why I think uh, you still have to consider uh, radical surgery um, in, this, uh, in this debate. And Rodrigo has told us uh, the true picture of TME surgery, and we cannot deny the fact that although TME optimizes local control rates, it's still a difficult and um, dangerous uh, operation with major uh, 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 morbid mortality, <coughs> with need for stomas, and also a significant impact on the quality of life of our patients. But on the other hand, watch and wait strategies is not standard of care. Although the paradigm might be changing nowadays, in my opinion, surgery and radical surgery is still the cornerstone in cure for rectal cancer. A non-curable local situation is unacceptable. And if we look at outcome standards, we've shown a couple of years ago that if you have a patient with a responding tumor, it has radical surgery and it has very good outcome. So outcome in terms of five-year uh, cancer and disease-free survival should be above 90% when you embark on organ preservation protocols in good responding patients. We're talking about low rectal cancer here and many papers uh, advocate that the same doctor, the same surgeon should do the follow-up. The follow-up should be done by the same surgeon in this low rectal cancer patients who have had uh, a new adjuvant uh, chemoradiotherapy. But then the question is, is this watch and wait only for rectal cancer, for low rectal cancer patients? Because you have to feel and you have to palpate the tumor. And the digital rectal examination, depending on the length of the, of the, of the finger of the surgeon, but it also depends on the surgeon's experience. And the surgeon is good at predicting um, a complete response, but still he's not 100% accurate. What we also know is that when you, when you perform a TME and when you have a pathological complete response, those patients have the best prognosis. But the question then is how to get there. And there still are some actual problems and some questions in this strategy. The accuracy of restaging modalities, the role of biopsies and role of local excision, also the, the, the debate between residual mucosal abnormalities versus early regrowth, the interval between the end of chemoradiotherapy and assessment, what to do during the interval, the impact on outcome, and as I said, follow up, how should it be organized, by who and uh, on what base. So the question is, what is a complete clinical response? And there is a very nice paper uh, from Rodrigo defining a complete clinical response. Widening of the mucosa, association of teleangiectasia, subtle loss of pliability, and the tumor cannot be felt or seen. And we, we all agree that in the, in, in the present endoscopic view, this is a complete clinical response. There is no discussion about that. But if you then look at the literature, and if you then look at a systematic review, many papers and many authors use a different definition of a complete clinical uh, response. So you have to assess literature in the light of the definition of the complete responders that's being used. There is a huge heterogeneity in definitions used for a complete uh, clinical response. What do we do with a complete clinical response? There is still no consensus, but there is a very nice uh, report, a follow-up study from 2007-2013, uh, showing that internationally there is support to, to do a watchful waiting, to do a complete, uh, to do a wait and see in patients who have achieved a complete response. But as you can see here, that is the, um, uh, the lower end of the, of the graph, the non-operative management, it's around 20% 
of um, uh, the physicians that were, ex uh, that were uh, interviewed that would favor a uh, watchful waiting uh, approach, but still the majority is in favor of resectional radical surgery. So the question is, how sure are you of a complete response? And I think that we are cladding close, but we're still not there. It depends on the selection of patients to undergo new adjuvant therapy. What is the tumor that you start with, and what is the aim of the new adjuvant therapy? Is it to improve local control rate? Is it to gain a margin negative resection to provide sphincter saving surgery, or is it with the purpose to induce a complete response. What do you select as type of neoadjuvant chemo radiotherapy? What are the selection of restaging modalities? And I think at present there is no reliable test to predict a complete pathological response in the patients. Are we good at predicting response? Well, I, I already told you that we are getting there, we are getting closer but we're still not 100% sure. As you can see, a combination of uh, clinical examination, the digital rectal examination, combined with MRI, diffusion-weighted MRI, endoscopy findings, and so on, leads to accuracy around 80, 85, so sometimes 90% um, of the cases. How about MRI? Again, retrospective data, it's already been alluded to. Is there a good diagnostic performance? Well, we have to say that in this paper, expert MRI readers were reading um, uh, those MRI images, and tumors were divided in four different categories, four different patterns, as you wish, and you can see the different accuracies of predicting a uh, complete response ranging between 75 and 100%. Uh, this is our own data. If you then combine all modalities, you combine PET, uh, PET imaging, MRI, endoscopic findings, uh, gene expression, inflammatory cytokines, you can see that in a prospective manner, we still don't reach 100% uh, sureness of uh, prediction. You can see the, the, the numbers there um, of, our, uh, of our created model. So, and this is the essential part of my talk uh, today, is that a complete clinical response very much differs from a complete pathological response. You can see in the top slide that you can probably have a patient with a complete clinical response on whom you perform a radical surgery at 12 weeks and still has remaining tumor in the scar left. But on the other hand, you can also have a patient in the bottom slide where your radiologists say there is diffusion-weighted uh, positivity of the tumor indicating that there is residual tumor left, uh, T2N0 is left, you perform a TME at 12 weeks and there is no tumor in the pathological um, uh, specimen. So it is essential to think about that when uh, you are in an MDT meeting. And this is also one of the limitations, in my um, opinion, of a watch and wait approach. There is no exact correlation between complete uh, clinical and complete pathological response with local regrowth rates between 16 and 28% fibrosis versus residual tumor cells. And, Rosie, and Rodrigo might have told you that salvage surgery in those studies is feasible and safe, but there is also some data showing that when you have to do salvage surgery, there is a higher APR rate. There is a higher rate of abdominal perineal excisions, and there is also a higher local recurrence rate um, uh, in one uh, retrospective study from 3 to 0 percent. So at present, there is no prospective evidence, there is no wider clinical applicability because there is no standardization in patient selection, as I told you before. And the main problem in the patients is that when they are faced with a local regrowth, when they keep a complete clinical response, then they are okay. But once there is a local regrowth, then there might be a problem, problem rising. And the percentages, the incidences are still quite high. This is a systematic review, local regrowth rate of 22%, 69% within three years of follow-up. And salvage surgery, there you go, possible in 88% of the patients. And 93% of the patients had a R0 resection with a three-year overall survival rate of 94%. This is another study 
comparing complete clinical response in a watch and wait scheme versus radical surgery for complete pathological responders with 22 local regrowth, again, incidence of 20 20%, with worse survival, worse disease-free survival in the patients who had a watch and wait um, a strategy. So how about salvage? This is data from, uh, from the Sao Paulo group, and, and very honest data combining the early and uh, late recurrences with an incidence of 31%, with more than 50% of the patients within 12 months, so within the first year of follow-up after initial complete response, salvage was possible in more than 90% with disease control in 94%, but still it's not 100% salvageable. And the question then is, could all of these patients have been saved by upfront radical surgery once a complete response was achieved? Maybe not. The question is still open. TME versus watch and wait in a systematic review, higher recurrences in the watch and wait group with impact on disease-free survival, but not overall survival in this systematic review. And last but not least, Regrowth rate of 16%, weighted mean 16%, with better disease-free survival rates in the group of patients who had surgery with a complete pathological response. What is the overall picture of salvages for local regrowth? This is a systematic review including nine studies, with salvage being possible in 84% of the patients. And the conclusion is there, the majority can be salvaged, the majority of the patients can be salvaged, but there is insufficient evidence on oncological safety. Another issue that we find hard to assess and which we definitely cannot feel is the, the discussion regarding residual lymph node disease. And this is data from the National Cancer Database. More than 12,000 patients who underwent chemoradiotherapy uh, for colorectal cancer over a 10-year period, and 30% had residual nodal disease after induction therapy. And this was clearly associated with survival, as you can see in the survival curve on the right. But what is more important is that there is also residual lymph, lymph node disease in patients who have a good luminal response. You see the numbers here. For YPT0, it's around 7% of positive lymph nodes in the TME specimen. And for YPT1, it's around 14%. And what we do know is that good responding patients with positive lymph nodes do worse. It's significant impact on recurrence-free survival. And that is another message, I think, that, uh, that we should, uh, should provide, is that when you have performed the TME specimen, you can stratify your patients for either an adjuvant um, uh, chemotherapy or not. And if you don't have the TME specimen, then it will be hard to discuss adjuvant therapy uh, uh, strategies, because we know that pathological complete responders probably don't benefit from adjuvant chemotherapy, but patients with residual disease, disease benefit from adjuvant chemotherapy, but you only know if you take the specimen out. So in conclusion, um, dear colleagues, I think that a total mesorectal excision remains the gold standard to cure patients, that assessment of complete clinical response is unreliable at present, when in doubt, it definitely has to come out, patient selection for watch and wait strategies and for a watch and wait approach is key and the local regrowth has worse outcome. But in the end, I think that we can be friends.